Hi, my name is Beth from My Tutoring Bee, and in today's video, we are talking about compound interest. I have a few examples for us, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's actually start off with talking about our formula here. So our formula is A equals P times one plus R over N, to all of that to the nt power. So what do all of those letters mean? So A means the final amount. So this is the total amount that is, let's say, in an account that you deposited money into that you're earning interest on, or the final amount that you owe if you are borrowing money, like let's say, to purchase a vehicle. So that would be the total amount that you would actually owe back. So it's the, the principal plus the interest. That's what that A represents. P is the principal, so that is our starting amount. So that's the amount that you would deposit into that account or the cost of the vehicle that you're purchasing without any interest or anything added onto it. R stands for the rate, and we always want to express this rate as a decimal. A lot of times it is given as a percentage, so we need to change that into decimal form. I do have a video on that. I'll put the link in the description below if you uh, need a little review on how to change percentages to decimals. T is our time, typically in years. So a lot of times we'll see the word annual or paid annually, things like that. So that is meaning in years. And N is the number of times that interest applies in T. So let's say that we have a situation where it is something that compounds monthly. So in a year, there are 12 months. So you would want to use N as 12 in that case in order to calculate that appropriately. All right, let's take a look at a pretty simple problem here. We've got our principal of 500, we've got our rate of 7%. The time that we're looking at is 20 years, and the number of times that it's going to compound is quarterly. So quarterly meaning four times in a year. So let's go ahead and sub those numbers in into our format here. So A equals P times one plus R over N over, sorry, I'll raise to the NT power. So A equals, our principal is 500. We're gonna multiply that times one plus. Now our rate, again, remember we wanna change this to a decimal, so we're gonna move that decimal over two times to the left and plug in any zeros where we have any empty spaces. So this is going to be represented as 0 0.07 over n, which is quarterly, four times, and that's raised to the n, which is four times, uh, 20 years, because that's how long we're going to, let's say that this is an amount of money that we're putting in a bank account that we want to earn interest on, uh, so that's how many years we're gonna let that money sit in that account. All right, and now we just have to calculate. We do always want to use order of operations. I've pulled up my calculator so that you can see how I am calculating all of this. So we've got 500 plus one plus, sorry, 500 times one plus 0.07 divided by four, close parentheses, and my calculator will take care of order of operations for me. It'll do that division before it adds the one. And then it's going to be raised to the four times 20 power. And let's see what we get. All right, so then we wind up with $2,003 and looks like 20 cents. We're gonna round to the nearest cent. So two decimal, two place values after the decimal there. So 2,003 and 20 cents, 2,003, 20. So this is the total amount that would be in that account after that 20 year period of time. Now, if the question is asking for what is the amount of interest that you earn, with this situation, then we would want to subtract away that original $500 that we deposited because that $500 doesn't represent any of the interest, that's just our principal. The interest is all that extra money on top of the $500. So that's how you would find that. Let's take a look at some other examples. Okay, here we have a question that says, which situation would yield a higher final amount of money? So we've got two different options here. Option one is a deposit of $400, earning 9% compounded semi-annually for seven years. Option two is a deposit of $700, earning 2% compounded annually for eight years. So we've got a few different things just at an initial glance. We're putting less money into this uh, 
account than we are in option two, but we're earning more interest for option one than we are in option two. Also another difference is that we're leaving our money in for less time, however, it is compounding semi-annually, which means twice a year. And this one is just compounding annually, so once a year, but we're leaving it in for an extra year. So which do you think is going to be the better option? Let's go ahead and calculate it and find out. So our formula again, A equals P times one plus R over N to the N T power. Let's sub in our numbers. So our principal is 400. One plus our rate, remember we wanna turn it into a decimal, so 0 0.09 over N, which is two. We're compound, it's compounding twice a year. And then it is compounding for seven years. So two times seven. Let's go ahead and pull up our calculator again. All right, let's go ahead and put those numbers in. 400, one plus 0.09 over two, all raised to the two times seven power. So we get $740 and we're gonna round up to 78 cents. Okay, so that is how much money we would have in an account with option one. Let's see what option two gives us. So again, A equals P, one plus R, N, N, T. I do usually like to rewrite out the formula just to make sure that I'm not skipping any steps, missing any pieces. So A equals our principal for this one is 700. One plus our rate is 2%, so 0.02. Now, this one is compounded annually, so I could put this over one. However, if something is compounded annually, you can leave out the N out of these equations. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put 0.02 there, raised to the eight power, right? So it just simplifies it a little bit for us. And then let's calculate this. So we've got 700 times one plus 0 0.02, and that is all raised to the eight power. Let's see what we get. We get $820 and 16 cents. 820, 16. So even though this is a smaller interest rate, it is getting us a little bit more money because we are starting with a much higher amount. So with that starting amount being $300 more than in option one, that just gives us $300 more to earn interest on right off the bat. So this one does turn out to be the better option. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that this video was helpful for you. If you like this video, please give me a like and a subscribe. That would really help me out to continue making these videos. I, I also have a link in the description that links to my pre-algebra series. This video is part of that series. I go over a ton of different skills that you would see in a typical pre-algebra class. So check that out if that would be helpful for you. And also don't forget to comment. Let me know what you thought of this video. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.